Итак, нам пора начинать. Okay, thank you very much. I wanted to introduce myself, but I was already introduced. Thank you. Uh, итак, let us start with small interactive. Who knows the first abbreviation here? NVME. And the second one? More people, RDMA. More people know that. Uh, a few words about myself. I am a head of product development at the Radix, uh, Radix company. Uh, I had quite a position, quite a number of positions in that company before, including even marketing. It doesn't mean that they pushed me from each department before that. Uh, the point is that I um, was promoted to a different department. And uh, the company is not very big, but uh, we have uh, a specialization there. We deal with different programs. We develop software for storage, data storage systems, maximum uh, fast and maximum reliable systems of data storage. We decided to check uh, operation of that in a high throughput system uh, with a high power uh, computing, and we uh, uh, didn't get the results initially that we expected to. Uh, receive and I then invited some other people in our company to investigate what is uh, the cause and also we uh, developed uh, support of this technology in a, in a kernel uh, developing a new uh, solution. A few words about our configuration. This is like a chaotic picture because we usually change every day something and that's why it's a, a lot of machines you see here two terabyte uh, um, RAM m memory in these machines are quite mm, capable computers. And also, n normally we have limited time to reconfigure the whole uh, setup, um, prepare it for testing. And every time you do that, you always think about what could be could have been done better. That's why we limit ourselves in time. We try to change it again again, trying to find optimal solution. A few words about technology. Uh, RDMA is a technology which allows uh, two nodes to write to the memory of each other without uh, going to through, uh, through central processor uh, information uh, and also bypassing operations uh, system kernel. There is a SCSI extension, as you know. Instead of sending uh, commands to reading, target would receive the command, copy that uh, data to buffer, then in reply would send you information from initiator that would uh, pick up that data from buffer and insert in the different memory. Uh, this is done different. Initiator is sending command and requests that this data will be written in the address. Uh, NVMe. NVMe is a new interface which was created by the uh, designers of high productivity flash devices, flash memory. When they concluded that current protocols are redundant uh, protocols and they're too complex and they have too many limitations, it's better to destroy it all and to create it a new. And uh, new things in this protocol is uh, support of uh, many uh, queues instead of uh, one queue support is 32, uh, 64,000 uh, KA queues are supported currently with 64K commands, number of commands, and uh, some other factors that I will speak about a bit later. NVMe uh, allows to transfer commands through a highly productive factory unit. This extension developers uh, had three goals. First is to um, preserve the architecture, um, use the protocol uh, that is used for operation, a maximum uh, addition of additional uh, various uh, libraries and um, time. Um, 
delay not more than 10 milliseconds. They manage that. Uh, nevertheless, the advantage is that the much uh, longer queues can be handled. Uh, also, advanced data protection embedded that we can be sure the blocks are um, delivered without any alterations and multipass. And there is also uh, sp spatial uh, names and uh, space namespace and sharing and very simple set of uh, uh, commands IO commands and mandatory of those are just three a few words about main definitions uh, key definitions is uh, a subsystem subsystem is anything uh, any block can be subsystem a set of controllers set of space and name names unique names and that unique name is similar to SCSI target names, as you see at the bottom of the slide for comparison. Namespace is an analog of Loon, which we see in SCSI uh, type uh, protocols. And this is LBA, a set that could be used for writing. Namespaces could be private, served by one controller, uh, or shared, um, serviced by uh, several controllers. And then NVB controller, uh, uh, NVMe controller that uh, can handle uh, a number of commands like abort and uh, delete and I/O, and transfers these commands to stack uh, high, uh, next level. Uh, all controllers interact with ex uh, exterior through ports. Uh, uh, either one or several physical ports in the factory uh, unit. Uh, NVM subsystem, as I mentioned before, has unique name, so-called LQM. Uh, the main difference of uh, LVM fabrics uh, compared to protocol used um, to connect local uh, devices, because we don't have PCI Express bus now, we have to have unique name in the net, in the network. We have to use methods to find and to connect uh, devices of the factory. And uh, because we don't have shared memory, we have to find a way to have a way to interact between two devices. Uh, we uh, added two new types of transport. Uh, first type is local bus, uh, which uses shared memory to send requests and receive uh, replies to those requests in the queue. And uh, for fa fabric, for we have two protocols, product transport using capsules. Capsule is uh, a way to package uh, data and commands in NME, uh, NVME, um, and also RDMA. A, fabric which allows to write data directly, not only capsule, but also direct transfer of data from memory to memory. A capsule uh, contains, there are two types actually of capsules, because two kinds of requests are also are used, um, put into a queue and uh, of request and reply, two types of capsules, uh, request and reply capsules. Capsules um, mandatory contain uh, formatted uh, requests and uh, reply data, as well as some optional data. There are three sets of commands. First uh, is commands related to fabrics. It's a fabrics command set, um, identification of connection. Uh, second is admin commands. It's uh, working with the space names. Uh, abort command and uh, delete IO and as well as input output commands to write, read, uh, write zeros, flash, and so on. As I said, there are three mandatory out of those. And let us go to practical use. I started testing of the system uh, with two systems to understand limits and what I can achieve with that. I don't like sterile tests that run 
disk is tested uh, separately when the system is not connected via the network, but directly. Uh, that is why I tested the real disks in real environment. They were connected through switches. Uh, and um, uh, yeah. uh, uh, other clusters were uh, busy doing some other jobs, some other tests were running there. So it was a real environment, a working environment. Uh, so I have two systems, 128 uh, gigabyte uh, DDR memory, 16 core processors, and they were connected through via switch uh, you know, through two uh, 100 gigabit ports. Software used was as follows. Operation system was uh, CentOS. Uh, Benchmark FIO 215, which I assembled in order to support NOVA. Um, I constantly monitored system with the help of Motilita Nigel's monitor. Uh, you can see here examples of graphs which are generated by that utility. Uh, service utilities also were used, as you see here listed on the slide. Uh, they were used to create fabric uh, connections and managing NVMe devices. Uh, that was based on processor described in SNEA because I was using Flash A. I wanted to be able to repeat the results achieved, and I uh, took a process appropriate for that, uh, which excludes uh, cleaning device, preparation of device, and formatting of reports. I just selected three basic tests, IOX test, maximum achievable operations per second, uh, maximum throughput test, and uh, latency test and uh, specification allows to use uh, certain formats in reports that is an example of such report I would not show all the reports to you because when we were comparing all protocols will be um, very mind blowing if we have to uh, consider all that complexity that's why I provide only a very simplified uh, version of that graph that you can generate uh, not all test parameters are described in specification, and part of those parameters are to be selected by operator um, arbitrary. Uh, I selected uh, parameters, as you see here on the screen, uh, 8 uh, number of threads and Q depths 15. Uh, 16, sorry, and additional test they also did, which is not described in specification, but soon I hope they'll be described. Maximum number of operations of output per second, not maximum achievable, but with limitation, uh, with correction for latency. And that means uh, uh, we have a latency target, and then you can play with the depths of the line of the queue. Uh, taking account that latency so that we are not uh, outside the uh, defined range. And the number of requests that they expect, I have uh, five nines here. Uh, how I prepared for the test? I compiled the uh, uh, kernel. Um, then you can use this uh, uh, hyperlink, uh, which uh, allow you to read the description of that. Uh, I took it from depository, uh, and then I played with parameters of the device in order to make sure that at the device we have maximum production and decreasing user capacity and increasing reserve uh, of the flash disk in order to have uh, possibility to test it for quite a long time and also increasing that um, productivity. And tuning guides I also used. Uh, in order to adjust the system. In tuning guides, there is a plethora of parameters to change. I'll provide you with most important ones. You have to disconnect number of threading, all this data, all the process, uh, to disconnect interleaving when you work with memory, when the memory uh, is connected to controls of both processes is filled out. Uh, um, and. Uh, from the perspective of OS operation system, I used 
uh, utility tuned ADM, uh, latency performance profile, and 90% of those recommendations I obtained from tuning guides were done automatically by this utility on its own account. Uh, and it was minimum frequency and maximum supported by processor frequency and the controller regime of scalability or frequency scalability into performance. One of the recommendations to do manually the balancing of interruption of the processor failed. And guys from HST said that the old contemporary kernels or could balances works in such a good way that we don't have to do anything manually. What did I accomplish? Tuning results below on the bottom. Uh, there are four kilobytes densities by minus 400. Uh, that is the minimum capacity was 2.2 uh, million operations per millisecond. For, then there is the uh, mix uh, 14 and 16 kilobyte uh, dogs. Uh, that is the mix. Uh, and I have a two node system. Uh, and as to the neighboring processor, if we turn to its memory, it could bring about more delays. In benchmark parameters, uh, I set up this ability for each working process of the benchmark uh, to be based on the rules, that is to work with those devices which belong and are managed by this kernel in order to identify the NUMA node name. There were two NUMA nodes because there are two processes. We have got to send as commands to get the LSPCI address of the device and then when we read uh, parameters of NUMA node, we can figure out to which processor this or that device belongs. And then in full test, uh, we set two parameters, uh, NOMA CPU nodes for each job, and NOMA memory policy. In the first instance, we indicate which node uh, this job should be done on uh, in the second one. What would be the policies of working with memory? It's uh, bind. That's what I identified. And num node number. I eat into the following situation. Capacity vis a vis correct and incorrect uh, settings increased by 15%, roughly. You can see it in, in the test for random read. Secondly, in the latest re uh, entry, we saw great uh, increase in capacity by 30 gigabyte per second vis-a-vis -vis conventional settings. Uh, and in latency test, we saw the latency reduction by three uh, microseconds. It's not a lot, but practice shows that setting of NUMA node better shows itself on more powerful processes. Uh, let's uh, go ahead. Target configurations. Uh, target uh, NV, um, uh, if it was in kernel 4.8, I compiled. It has good modular architecture. Each component is implemented as a separate standalone logic model. The target supports the maximum simple set of commands, three me documents, TV driving flash from the standpoint of data set management. Uh, it's analogous to analogous to uh, threat company. It supports the access sheets, but not reservations. If you are going to use this target as a, uh, data storage uh, system for distributed cluster, you will fail. And it's a bit muddled up how it's going to work from the standpoint of flowover controllers when one of the controllers fails. Configuring uh, MVMF target, it's four stages. First, we, we uh, deploy necessary drivers, then we upload to models and we target, uh, I, and we set up those ports, and we configure the subsystem. There are two types of configuring. Uh, we may create files or using target CLI. 
Here you can see output of uh, target CLI. I created one subsystem with two ports and three namespaces created, which you see below. Each namespace is MV. Um, F, uh, device of the hardware. It's all connected from the client very s in a very simple way. Same utility for local connections and network devices. First, we send command discovery. It's processed by discovery controller. Discover controller informs the uh, customer which devices and some systems exist on this target, and then connection is done. Apart from uh, uh, this kernel target, there is the target target developed uh, by Intel in user space. I tested it as well, but there were several problems here. First one is related to the fact that I failed uh, to set target to work with the right normal uh, node. Secondly, one, uh, when there is a connection under specific load, uh, and when we play around the parameters and depth, uh, everything failed in this task. That's Intel driver. It has got unified shared configuration file. One, the fourth of it contains lots of parameters and the memory it can grab and the depth of queue and work with processor. An awful lot of parameters. Some of them is not supported yet, not followed up. And in point of fact, the stability of that was a bit disappointing for me. The testing results, first column, always results of the local tests. The local test is test for capacity of arbitrary reading, uh, throughput capacity of arbitrary reading versus SR, SRP particles and the fabric. Uh, displayed a great increase in product uh, capacity even in one port. Under uh, the random writing, we see a very big uh, capacity, a very high capacity increase uh, of uh, NVM of fabric. Uh, so it's very good. Last test here, we can see that the performance uh, uh, testing results, uh, the performance is higher than in SRP and SS, but here there are mixed ions by 16 kilobyte, and I saw that um, uh, this Intel uh, device uh, breaks the connections. I didn't test it any further. The throughput capacity testing didn't show very different results, but nevertheless, uh, actually, in reading, it was 9 megabyte per second, even uh, when it was via one per port, which is higher than SRP and ISR. As to the reading, writing uh, capacity, maximum capacity was almost the same for an Avmaze. Uh, so from the standpoint of latency, it's the level of uh, delays I noticed, which is shown here when we work by protocols, extra levels of delays are shown here. I, it's the wrong picture. I'll just tell you extra levels of delays on targets or uh, in, on the targets from NVM uh, or fabric in most, uh, just nine seconds. In the SRP, there were more than 100 microseconds sometimes. And last test here uh, in the system, a test with a limited number, limited quantity or optimum quantity of input-output operations with a limited uh, size of latency. In this test, uh, MVMP over fabric performance is much higher than the performance of uh, SRP and RSM targets and all the parameters, by the way. 
After I have tested connections from the two nodes, I tested the performance of the entire cluster. Four nodes were not accessible, but 12 of them remained altogether. 24 uh, devices, I limited latency, looked through all the disks between all the nodes. I launched benchmarks and extra network traffic was gener generated by DD for this mesh always to be loaded up to 90. 90 percent. As a result, you can see I achieved almost 12.5 million input-output operations per second throughout the cluster, which doubles uh, uh, the results of other protocols, uh, double higher. So it was almost 6.5 million uh, input-output operations per second. That's what I achieved. I tested Microsoft technologies. I will not uh, compare a performance in one chart because everything was different. The availability file system protocol and mesh, uh, Microsoft does not support uh, those drivers for those cars. What did we do? We uh, set SMB direct uh, server and uh, we tested the form performance of the local system and via SMB Direct protocol. From uh, the standpoint of SMB Direct uh, performance, I found a barrier of 500,000 IOs. So I didn't manage to cope with that in operations of reading and recording. And first, I was uh, surprised to see very small added delay on recording, writing operations only uh, for microseconds much uh, uh, lower than in MVM over fabric. Uh, but then I looked at the maximum density, it went up to 12,000 microseconds uh, vis a vis 250 local ones. Uh, uh, or even more than 13,000. Uh, the cl Microsoft client was caching and during flashing latency changed. Uh, that is why the average level of latency was not low but high, just the reverse. I didn't know how to uh, disconnect caching. All the recommendations I found in the internet were only about SMB uh, 2 1, but not for SMB uh, 0. I didn't know how to disconnect ca caching. What were the results. Uh, so uh, the performance of NVM uh, of all the fabrics demonstrators, uh, demonstrators uh, it's much better results than other RDMA based storage protocols, but I didn't achieve expected results and the added latency level is higher than what vendors demonstrated in their tests, like the demo by HGST at the last flash mode uh, summit, uh, it was 1.9 uh, microseconds, and I had nine. It was outside the limits promised by vendors on this protocol. Well, are there any questions? It should be mentioned that uh, the speaker I uh, just uh, used all the limit for a presentation, but we have time for one question. I have a question as to the pricing, the cost of uh, just uh, in dollar exchange rate, which protocols are uh, cheaper. Well, the situation is as following. Uh, from the perspective of the hardware, it was the same uh, set of devices and protocols based on RDMA, RDMA need some support from uh, fabric. I word should not be used to support uh, RDMA. We need some convergence in net or MFGBA. So if we are to compare all the RDMA-based RDMA uh, protocols, they need same equipment routers. The percentage of cost is comparable to the percentage of the uh, growth of performance. 
it's all software uh, solutions. Uh, we need some RDMA-based fabric for it to start working. Uh, RDMA target in the kernel, kernel supports different block devices. By block devices of Linux, it could be different devices, flash disk, MMME disk, RAM disk, conventional commonplace disk, or inverted it supports that. It's simpler to get it to fabric. It's better to work with MV, uh, NVMe disks. Otherwise, you will not see all the advantages of the protocol. And front end should be uh, rapid. Uh, Intel uh, back end uh, disks are the same as others in the US, by the way. Why is there a, uh, such a big discrepancy between what demonstrators shown and latency, for example? How could it be explained? Primarily, I accounted for the fact that vendors were uh, displaying their demo in sterile test connecting systems directly one to another without fabric. And even if they had switches, nothing was inside. But my fabric was loaded. Thank you. Once again, let's thank the speaker. И у нас перерыв перед последним докладом, и я напоминаю всем про хэштег Linux Peter и про про что я еще всем напоминаю? Про отметки на страничке Evaluation.